Hello, Dr. Liskarden. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today and welcome to uh, Modern Health Span. Ah, thanks, Richard. Good to see you again. Thank you. Yeah, so I, today what I wanted to do is talk about your book, The Microbial Burden. Um, so the main theme of the book is that kind of like we're besieged by microbes and that as we get older, uh, kind of this gets worse, right? Uh, both in terms of the way they, they affect us and also kind of our, the way our immune system can fight against it. Um, so I wonder if you could spend a few minutes to kind of introduce kind of the key concepts of, um, you know, wh where this came from and, and what your thinking is around how, how microbes affect us as we get older. Sure. So uh, as we briefly talked about uh, last time we spoke, um, I honestly didn't have an interest in microbes at all uh, 10 years ago mm -hmm. when I uh, switched from my, my graduate work as a, you know, as a thesis student, as a doctoral student, as I transitioned into postdoc work, looking at the serum metabolome, you know, all the mm -hmm. circulating metabolites in your blood and how they associate with mus muscle mass and function in older adults. So I wasn't thinking about the microbiome at all. And then I noticed that um, many gut bacteria derived metabolites were associated with muscle mass and function in older adults. So uh, that got me thinking, you know, uh, well, how, how's that even possible? How, 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 how's it, how can they influence muscle? How can gut bacteria influence muscle? So um, I started reading more into it and trying to come up with hypotheses based on the evidence, you know, uh, published the evidence. And um, I started to consider that during aging, there is a shift in the composition of the gut, gut microbiome that um, is related to an increase in intestinal permeability, meaning more stuff from the gut now translocates into the blood. Um, and it, not just, you know, the simplistic explanation of, okay, you have more stuff in the blood from a non-self being bacteria, virus, fungi, or whatever, that's causing inflammation and inflammation as the explanation for a reduction in muscle mass or function, which to me is interesting, but let everybody else make the, you know, Hey, we've got inflammation causing decreases in muscle mass and function. That's not as exciting for me. For me, the exciting part was uh, connecting as a potential mechanism that gut bacteria decreased uh, gut barrier function or increased intestinal permeability. And then those gut bacteria derived metabolites were somehow, and still, you know, I'm, as, as, I, as we briefly talked about last time, I'm working on grants and I've got grants in review that are going to look at potentially a causative role for some of these bacterial metabolites on influencing muscle mass and function uh, in, in older adults. But, uh, you know, so, uh, the altered gut bacterial composition, increased intestinal permeabilities, gut bacterial metabolites are in the bloodstream, and then somehow they affect muscle mass and function. Now, some of that, some of that data has been filled in in animal models since I came up with these ideas uh, four years ago in the book, um, including uh, things like the short chain fatty acids, which are produced by the gut bacteria, gut bacterial fermentation of dietary fiber. So, gut bacteria take dietary fiber, soluble fiber, and they convert that into short chain fatty acids, including acetate, propionate, and butyrate. Those short chain fatty acids have been shown to be beneficial in animal models for improving um, physical function and increasing muscle mass. So, uh, and then conversely, there are other gut bacterial metabolites that negatively affect muscle mass and its composition. So an increase in, in fat and muscle. So, but then I started to think more broadly, you know, uh, what if it isn't just, and actually many of that uh, much of that story in terms of muscle mass and function, as I mentioned, you know, we're still going to try to sort out that, that story in humans, if it's true or not, because there's almost no data um, uh, along those lines. It's mostly animal models, in vitro studies, uh, uh, stuff like that. So I started to think more broadly, what if the gut microbiome, intestinal permeability, and these gut bacterial metabolites in blood could not only affect muscle mass, but liver function, kidney function, brain health, Alzheimer's disease, and now that we're into the disease spectrum, what about cardiovascular disease, cancer, all of this stuff? So as I started reading more into it, I started to get the idea that, that this wasn't just a muscle phenomenon, that you know, when considering that more than 120 years ago, human lifespan or life expectancy was essentially 40 years. And then with the advent of you know, water purification and uh, vaccination, antibiotics, um, stuff along those lines, we've been able to double lifespan while reducing the microbial burden, you know, the quote unquote microbial burden that adversely affects us. So when looking in further into this story, 
and seeing that there are bacteria that are found in atherosclerotic plaques, that there are bacteria, fungi, and viruses that are found in the uh, amyloid plaques that are found in Alzheimer's disease patients, or microbes that have been causatively involved in mechanisms that affect cancer, including uh, HPV, uh, the, you know, the human papillomavirus, um, or, or, in, or in microbes that affect stroke risk. I started to put it into, put it into a broader perspective of, you know, we haven't conquered the war on microbes, you know, even though we, we've doubled our life expectancy over the last 120 or so years, we've only delayed it to where we don't think about it for most of our life until it becomes a problem. And then, you know, uh, you know, what do we do then? So, um, you know, four years ago, this idea, even though there was enough evidence to suggest all of these hypotheses, um, was basically foreign. So I wrote the book to get that message out there. There is enough data to suggest a microbial component to all of the diseases of aging and even aging itself. And then more recently, I updated the book to show that there is also data linking microbes and or microbial products, you know, including lipopolysaccharide and others uh, that uh, play a role in each of the hallmarks of aging. So the hallmarks of aging are almost completely oriented towards human physiology and without any impact of how microbes are affecting them. So I put that data in the book too, considering that we're basically a 50-50 symbiont of our own human DNA and microbial DNA. So I basically put the, you know, wanted to get the book out to put the word out. And, you know, I have to say, uh, you know, it's doing reasonably well, um, you know, considering it's four years old. So, um, and it's an idea that I don't expect to die until, my, you know, the, the public's understanding of microbes on human health is ubiquitous. And I think most people still don't even consider you know, except for the rare exception of, you know, uh, a new study on Alzheimer's disease and the gut microbiome or stuff like that, so. Right, thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.